let me go to the word of God. Uh, my elder has already prayed for me. Untying the tide for God's business. Untying the tide for God's business is our message this morning. And I want us to read the book of Luke chapter 19 from verse 28 all the way to verse 35, but I'll make inference to verse 38. Untying the tide for God's business. The Bible says this in the book of Luke chapter 19 uh, from verse 28. When he had said this, he went ahead going into, up to Jerusalem and it came to pass when he drew near to Bethphage and Bethany at the mountain called Olivet that he sent two of his disciples saying, go into the village opposite you where you enter, you will find a coal tied there, on which no one has ever sat. Loose it and bring it here. And if anyone asks you, why are you losing it? Thus you shall say to him, because the Lord has need of it. Verse 32. So those who's, who were sent went their way and found it just as he had said to them. But as they were losing it, as they were losing the call, the owners of, of, of it said to them, why are you losing the call? And he said, the Lord has need of him. And then they brought him to Jesus and, and they threw their, their own clothes on the call and they set Jesus on him. And as he went, many spread on their clothes on the road. And it continues, and it continues. May the Lord bless his word. Now, this is a very interesting passage that I want to share this day uh, about many of us. Maybe God has been able to give you a business to do or a skill to do and you're wondering to do. I'm reading a message that many of you may have liked me to preach maybe during Easter. But you know, Easter was not just a day that would be celebrated one day. God actually, when he was going through that moment before his departure and he had what we call the grand entry in Jerusalem, he actually goes there and again at the backdrop of the expectation of many people who are riding on the horses, he chooses a cold. A cold was a young donkey. It's a young donkey. So he sat on a young donkey and the donkey was not his. Neither was it for the disciples. But it belonged to somebody. Now, the most interesting part was this donkey was tied. Normally, yesterday, somebody almost preached my message, and the Philip is aware. Somebody tied the donkey. This message I had prepared and said, do not preach my message. We don't tie donkeys. Donkeys are just led to walk free. Are we together? Uh, for many of you who have been able to move around, most donkeys, you don't know even the owner. But when the owner comes, you will always, the donkey will see the owner. So this cord was tied. I don't know whether the donkeys in Jerusalem were different from our donkeys. But the most interesting part is that it was young, it was tied. And I will look at some things. And Jesus says, go and lose it. They say, the owner will ask me, why are you doing that? I say, bring it, because I need it. And tying our tied uh, called or uh, the tide for God's business. Is there a difference of our business and God's business? And what is the commonality if maybe if there is no difference? What is the difference? Is there a difference between our business and God's business? The business, the biashara. And is there also a difference of our business being busy? Because sometimes we can be very busy. As a pastor, some of us, I ask you to come during the week. You say, I'm busy. Then I realize you are doing nothing. You are busy. Business. B-U-S-Y-I-N. You are busy. Is your business God's business? The call had no spiritual bondage or information. There was no spiritual bondage of that call that was died. But it had a physical bondage. By the fact that it was tied on a certain place, then... It only could feed on that circumference where it was tight. So 
feeding for that particular cold was actually going to be limited by the fact that it was tight. The other thing that you will observe when you look at that tight cold is that it was not on duty. <laughs> it was not on duty because donkeys carry, uh, the, their work is to carry uh, burdens. So when they tied it, it means it was not on duty. You need to bear that and notice that actually it was lying idle. Are we together? Yes. You, have we ever had some money this holiday, Christmas? Some of you we need to be feeding. And you realize you have money that you have not budgeted for. This is what we are talking about. There is high likelihood that this cold, because it was young, there were other colds. Silikuwa sumefungwa na zingine. Are we together? So I'm speaking to us. I want you to bear that also. Understand that when he said, and there was a certain cold that no one sat on. Kumanisha kulikuwa na zingine watu walikuwa mekalia. Ito zikuwa zikuwa ni muze. Are we together? Praise the Lord. I'm setting a foundation for you to understand what we are going to talk about. There are possible ways that we can be tied just before I get into what I want to speak. One could be physical. Another one could be spiritual. Another one could be emotional. And also we could be financial uh, tied. For many of us who are living in the times, um, the world has learned that we are borrowers. So you are borrowing from Tala, from every place, from Epcom, Copcash, from Emshuari, from everywhere, from every bank. And you can find yourself that any time anyone tells you that I lend money, you say, I need money. You've been bondage of finance. Emotional. You could be held. Thank God that we'll be having our emotional Sunday on 3rd, on 4th of December. That you are always in a, in a vicious sack of mourning every day, every time. It's very possible. It is also very possible that you could be tied spiritually and God want to release you. Today I'll be talking about a perspective of financial in the way that many of us are tied in a way of thinking that we cannot have breakthrough. We are living in a very good time. When I came here, I don't know whether I was driving with Reverend Patrick or Reverend Judy. And I liked Eldoret. One, because even the water from this place, for some of you who are bored, you take it, is sweeter than the, the purified water. I told you, Pasi. The water is sweeter. I have, sometimes I buy water and then I just take the water from my borehole and uh, you warm it. It's sweeter. They say this is good to be in Eldoret. Anyway, I have lived in an Akuru water is salty. For some of you who love salted water, it's up to me, I don't like. I've been in Kajiado. Uh, water is salty. I've lived in Machakos, where I own some view interest, actually. The water is salty. Yeah. But this place, the water is sweet and it's fresh. Leave alone that. When I was doing my several trips or visitations, I came to realize that the elderly has so many hostels. And then, at, at that, I saw malls. And then we look like we are very minute town. Eldoret has actually an international airport. I'm just reminding you these things you know. <laughs> yeah, so it has an international airport. But yet, no one had thought. In fact, at one point I said, Eldoret is bigger than Nakuru. I want to believe that Eldoret, in terms of its cash flow, should be higher than Nakuru. It connects to Ethiopia on the other route. It connects to Uganda directly and connects back to Nairobi and you go the other side. It's a strategic city. But it's a high likelihood that Eldoret is under bondage. But thank God that when I saw that and the new governor was coming to office, I was on the road and he said, in his initial remarks, we want to turn Eldoret into a city. I said, this man is saying something. And for some of us who have spiritual eyes, this is your message. If you are living in this place, we need to be released to carry the Lord. Amen. We are destined for greatness. The city may not maybe come in five years, but there is a call that is unused in Eldoret. And that could be the city itself, and it could be the believers. Believers who are just watching and imagining that this city belongs to other people. 
But the Lord will come in his grand entry and he say, tie this. And he's going to use the unlikely. And he will ride on it and he will have the grand march in Jerusalem. Praise the Lord. And this message is for you to be released to see the opportunity. That you may catch it and do what God wants you to be able to do. So what is the danger of being tied? You become restricted. In a way of thinking, in a way of thinking, when you see development, unafikiria, habijawai fanya hivi, you are retrogressive. Mpaka umutu anauliza, na mimi nikienda kufungua iyo, the donkey. They will ask him, just say, the Lord needs it. The answer was simple. And Jesus knew it. Actually, what he actually asked is what he was asked. Okay? Your mobility is restricted when you are tied. Your health could be restricted. You know, you get that some of us when you are in hostel, you just have your own cubicle. Your growth is, and interaction is limited. When you are tied, that is what happens to you. So if somebody is tied, these are some of the dangers that happen to them. But there is a privilege when God comes and untie you. And this is my call. That your call is lengthened to feed. God wants us to feed beyond and enjoy interactions and networking that you'll be able to go. Then it's brought. You enjoy the mobility. You enjoy the stature, particularly if you carry Jesus. I want to say this particularly. If this donkey, and when this donkey carried Jesus, because that was now God's business. For pastor here, I do God's business. I we together. I'm not in business like you had to transact, but I'm in God's business. And God sat on the donkey. I want to sit on some of you. I don't know how many of you are willing to come here and I do it literally. But now, God was on an assignment. He was on a donkey. For some of you who are working every day and you woke up, it is labor, it's a burden. The donkey accepted. And Jesus chooses one when he unties it and accepts. In fact, the problem with the untied don donkey was not his donkey, it was his owners. I want to address you. Some of you own this town. You are born here, and you own good estate. The Lord needs you. Amen. Tell your neighbor, the Lord needs you. The Lord needs is called in the name of Jesus. The problem in this context is not even the untied or the tied. It is it's on us. Praise the Lord. God wants to be able to visit us and walk with us. I want to address the honors in this place. Uh, but I should be humble now. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Praise the Lord. You have choices to make. You have the choices to make. That is the privilege. That you will carry Jesus or will not. Or else Jesus will come among many us and he will untie the donkey you want to use and he will ride on it. More interestingly, and I will be able to point out, he will choose maybe not you. What will you do? We need to be thankful when God chooses us. As a city, when people are crying of food, some of us have food. When people are crying of water, some of us have water. When people are crying of many things people are talking about, we have them in our place. We need to be thankful. We are tied but God is untying us. God is asking for kingdom financials, people that will be able to rise up. Some of us have our businesses. Does your business, does God ride on your business or is it just your business for your being busy? This is the thing. You just enjoy. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. It is a privilege to serve God. It is a privilege to carry Jesus. I don't know how many of you enjoy that. If there is anything I enjoy is preaching. I can preach every day. I praise the Lord. But do you enjoy what you do, particularly for God? Or you struggle because you want to get an earning? I want to list some people here that we do business as hobbies. Amen. Imagine going to do business as hobby. I looked at one man, I guess this is the CEO for equity, and he was being interviewed. Do you have a lot of money? Does it actually, do you enjoy when you have more money? He said, I really actually don't enjoy. 
I only enjoy when I spend it. That was his answer some four years ago. And this is what God wants us to do. That we can have business. And we can have God when he rides on our back. I feel good. That he's riding on me. And it's not a burden. Praise the Lord. It becomes like a hobby. It becomes an enjoyable business. You are released from the way of people thinking. Because the bondage that men have put us in that, that you should work and do more work for more pain without gain. But God wants to release us that we may see a better part of it. If it was Easter, I would tell you that actually after the donkey was released to go and uh, carry Jesus, the people removed their clothes wakaitandikia na wakaweka red carpet. So Jesus did not walk on the red carpet. The donkey did. That is the privilege of being released. Do you walk in places where no one has been? I got a testimony from somebody yesterday and they were saying it's good to serve Jesus. As I was just in the presence of God, somebody told me that I have been appointed to be able to do a certain task and I didn't know about it and everything is catered for. That is what God does when you have Jesus. Praise the Lord. When you are business owners, God, you walk in places and you want only me knowing Jesus. I've been ushered to sit in this place. Praise the Lord. We are planning for the dedication of this city. And uh, uh, along the way in the initial plans, um, the owners of this city, in terms of spiritual owners, those are the bishops. They have a caucus away from their own way of thinking. So along the way, they also looked for me to sit among them. So when I entered, they thought I was lost. Um, the, for reasons some of you may know. Um, but truth be said, they looked for me because I carry you. <laughs> I carry you. I carry Jesus. Praise the Lord. So I, we had to do an introduction of five people because one looks strange in a serious meeting. <laughs> this is the privilege God is asking us. You will actually represent many of your families in places that are not, maybe you could not enter just because you carry Jesus. Praise the Lord. Some of our businesses have actually remained so minute. Some of us are doing business that are only tied in this locality. I want to say God wants to untie you and remove the geographical mobility. Amen. Who say that your business can only transact in a village of soy? And yet we have an international airport. Maybe you didn't know why I mentioned that Elder has an airport. You think that airport is just for people to come and go? It's for you. Praise the Lord. It's for our goods and our children. It's for our transaction of businesses. Why would we make actually a bypass and be able to put a place of parking of, of many trailers? And some of us are not thinking about investing in trailers. Because we are tied in a place... But God is saying, I want to untie somebody, a business, for me. And he say, you mean? He say, yes. Why? Because the Lord needs you. Why? When God unties you, it's because he wants you to fulfill God's purpose. There were many calls in that place, but God chooses one for his purpose. Jesus was in his way to Jerusalem. And you know, in a short while, sorry, Jesus was going to be crucified. This was meant to be a grand entry. He is a depiction. We don't just have resources for anything. I keep on saying every day, all we have is for God's purpose. God would want to see one thing that you did because you love him. So be on the move. Be on the move in your business. Be on the move. Don't allow to be untied. Now that I've talked about the airport, they say that every time the aircraft is in the air, the owner is making money. Are you, you do know that? Huh? When the pilots are not going to work, we are making losses in this Kenya, 300 million per day. So when you're on the move, you make more money. When you are loosed, you make more money. But when you are sitting with your great potential, then you are losing it. So that is the secret of being untied. God wants us to be on the move up there. 
You could be a giant. The last few days when the pilots went on strike, we had our beautiful airlines, the pride of Africa, down. But everyone was mourning. So it's not good and great for us to be having wealth that is not in circuit. Praise the Lord. It is not. I know we, we feel good in terms of self-actualization. When you check your bank statement and you realize it reads good amount of money. But for God, it must be loose. And it must carry him. That he will be able to be the president and the resident. He was riding on it. Don't be idle. Unless you are refreshing. Praise the Lord. I want to believe that before Jesus came, the cold was refreshing. Like some of us are refreshing. Amen. So if you are not doing anything, I want to believe that you are refreshing. But God wants to untie you for his business. What are the opportunities for God's business? I say, is our business God's business? When you are just lying there, because why would Jesus ride actually on a cold and people were riding on horses? Is there a dichotomy of God's business and our business? The Lord needed a call for his business. It is not your business. It is God's business. A call or rather donkeys are commonly used for very goods or people. As such, God needs our hard work to facilitate his business. Hallelujah. I should say this politely. That I've worked so hard. Then why should I just come and extend it there? That is what God wants. Anataka kalia vizuri. Nimai panda punda mimi. Kimichezo nikiwa mtoto. And you know sometimes it can jump. But you must be able. It works hard. Yeah. Sasingine tukua na eka mzigo nda inu naka. I told you I've lived in Kajiado. So I know this thing. Some of you have not been able to, to sit on a donkey. God wants to sit on some of us. God wants to use that business. And you need to take it gladly. I know the owners will complain. But there should not be any dichotomy of our business and God's business. There are many calls, untapped business potential, which are needed in the house of God. While I was preparing this message and I was listening to somebody who was preaching, and I realized there is untouched potential in this place, either because of misinformation or the fear of the owners where our calls are, are, are tied. Because some of us, we came here and the only call we have is that employment at MTRH, that employment at SITAM, that employment in this. So you think that I will finish and go. I'm here to tell you, you are also part of the people that God wants to use in this place. He's untying you to see beyond in the name of Jesus. And as I was going through this, and I'm praying for the CBF team, next year we are going to begin the business owners and the CEO forum. So give a CEO on the Unaingia. Praise the Lord. Because I believe they will impact people. Say amen. I want to believe that all of you will be CEOs. We will do three breakfasts next year. The breakfast for CEOs and business owners. We want to be able to see how do we actualize and be able to use all the facilitation that God wants to be able to do through us. So the clarion call for CBF is to raise kingdom financials, like this man here. Hmm? He will become a very powerful man. Amen. Amen. This is kingdom number one, the CEO for my breakfast. Amen. Appreciate you, Mtoto. Amen. Anakuja out Who never know? God may be bringing him there. The donkey, the call, didn't know what God wanted to use. Oh, it was young like this child. Amen. Actually, our Sitam Business Forum was to be able to raise the men of God that will be able to facilitate the work of God. The work of God is very expensive. For many of you who saw our track we acquired, it costed us over 30 million to be able to put that track where it is. And we need actually around three of them, every region one of it. And this can be done by many of us that will accept God to use you 
to facilitate his work. Amen? There are many untapped potentials, and we pray that. Jesus knew about the cold and where it was tight. He knew. And he knew even the answer of the owners. Like some of you are saying, Hi, Pastor, this city is very difficult. The Lord told me, in fact, when I was praying, I realized this message is difficult. And by the way, if some of you are not very serious and are not seeing beyond what I'm saying, when the, the cord will be untied, some of you will be regretting why you did not untie very easily. Because having lived here, some of you may start to acquire land in strategic places. So that that time, before those the Lord will bring from elsewhere come, you will have a place. Praise the Lord. This is what I'm talking about. Business opportunities yet to be explored are already known by God. Because he's an omnipotent God. He will untie those businesses. But if only we take him by his word. When he asked that you go and try, this guy said, and when they ask us, they say the Lord has said it. I may not be a prophet, but I will tell you sincerely the untapped potential in this place. Every day I walk in Eldoret, I see so many great potential that even our young people who are majority in this place, we have majority, actually half of us here, our young people, God would want to see each one of you employing two or three people. Amen? Reverend, uandike watu watatu hata kama weni mchungaji. Amen? I saw the, the author of our discipleship, Edmund Chan, and the other guy. When they, we hosted them here in Nairobi, and we paid for them the aircraft and agreed their honoraria. On the last day to go, they said, we want to host the pastors for dinner. Then they hosted us for dinner in Panafric Hotel. Then I realized, also as a pastor, we need to think business. Reverend Petronila, we need to think business so that members who are here will not think that we'll only come here to actually collect something from tithes and offerings. So that we also be tithing. Amen. 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 <laughs> Amen. The Lord is untying our tightness. Tumefungwa. Tukaambiwa sisi ni kuhubiri na tuwezi fanya biashara. There is a release of untied potential. So long as it doesn't conflict your working hours. Amen? Because I will still come for your hours. Not all donkeys are used by God. You need to know that. He uses those he chooses. He chooses one, young one. Presumably, there might be others. And I will tell you maybe about why that donkey was young. God was looking at certain business principles, which I will be mentioning later. Three principles or a few principles of untied calls in God's kingdom. They know God as a enabler for wealth creation. In Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 18, the Bible says, It is God that gives us the ability to make wealth. So it is not us. There are some of us who are blessed. In fact, somebody said, if you steal a billion from a billionaire, he'll be a billionaire later. Because God enables them. He has given them that gift. Praise the Lord. And we need to know that. That in the kingdom principle, when God unties you, no one can tie you again. It is God that has said, untie this man, that he will be free. Praise the Lord. One of my usher in one of our assemblies, people thought he had a lot of money. He went and stole many things. So when I visited him, he said, I have only stolen what I can get back. You don't know that. This wealth God has given us and we can always make it. No one can steal it because it is entrained in the faith of God. They honor God always with their substance. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 9. Now, if you want to be a kingdom financial and you are untied, you would use wealth to worship God. You don't use it to worship yourself or a show for other people. And God will be honored in that. That is the difference. There are many people that are wealthy, but they cannot be called kingdom financiers because they are not using it for God. That code was very special. 
Because Jesus sat on it. They use what? To worship God. Matthew chapter 6 verse 24 says, One cannot worship a mammoth and God. What you are saying is that you can actually not actually worship um, a wealth or anything else and then think. You use what? To worship God. So what is used to be able to facilitate the work of God? Those actually that are released and they understand the kingdom principles of being untied, they understand the key factors which are actually hard work. The donkey carries Jesus. Integrity and focus. We also want our children. Some of us in the CBC, you need to start teaching our children about saving. Amen. You need to start teaching them how to save that money you give them. It's hard work. Ask them when you are doing business that can you be able to have a portion of this land and this is yours. Just give them even a quarter or two feet of your land and say plant onions here and sell to me. You need to teach them hard work. Inheritance, I know some of you are doing good, but God wants this young call to carry Jesus. Teach them that they can actually be able to save. Open for them a saving and give them money to go and save. Praise the Lord. That's being untied. Release our children from the bondage. Some of us have made our children to be slaves. We wash for them everything. We give them everything. This is a principle that we are seeing here. The untied call, the young donkey to carry Jesus. As young as now, learn to save. Money will never be enough. Learn the principle. One of my mentors taught me this and helped me. When I earned little money, he gave me the percentage that to give 20% to your saving. And I was telling the young professional that when actually we were employed first, actually in Sitam, as in terms, and we were earning very little money. Somebody was living in a house 10,000 more than that salary. You can predict where he is. Hard work. Integrity. Jesus might have chosen this donkey because it was young and innocent. That is integrity. It was pure. The presumption is said, and no one has ever sat on it. Amen. You can see. Don't dig much more. I'm just trying to think in that call. Why he said, go and bring me the young call. Innocence. Integrity. Biashara Safi. Focus. That I go and use it. The owner needs it. It was only than time to go and loiter everywhere. God wanted to use that. I want to look at those three things and then we will pray and finish. Hard work. Verse 28. Actually, from Jericho to Jerusalem was very steep. For many of you who can be able to go and look at that interpretation. So even Jesus himself walking down, he was, it was hard work. And then he was to ride on that particular cold. In Mark chapter 6, verse 45, 46, we read about Jesus after he did all that he was able to do as a miracle. He sent the disciples away and then he remained, okay, uh, to do some work there. And then in Luke chapter 8, verse 22 to 24, he ministered until he was exhausted. We need to minister. We need hard work. It's a principle in the church. Friends, we don't just come to church and we think we can be tender preneurs and we can make money while we are seated in a certain room. God is expecting hard work from us. He's expecting us to be donkeys that he can ride on and grand march to where he wants to go. Integrity in your duties. Are you like the cold that Jesus would say, I have a donkey here that has never been misused. The likelihood of many people using many things I have a amazed my first investment in this place. And uh, I realized I was unable to dry my maize um, because it was becoming very difficult. So somebody came and said, um, we will buy it even if it's not dry. And then I had not measured. So when I asked them to measure, I realized my maize, which was double the price, is becoming half as it's being loaded. I told them, please stop. There are men here that you can't trust with their scales. Yeah, and then they went. 
How can my maize, which I've measured during shelling, now we are measuring it after drying one day, it's becoming already half, even if the drying moisture. The scale, God would want to use beautiful. I still mourn for my maize. But thank God for the lesson. I paid the tuition fee to learn integrity that I may preach to you. Scales that we are using. Focus, verse 29. Jesus stayed at Bethany during his visit in Jerusalem. He was focused. He was not everywhere. Go beyond your academic papers. Jesus chose a cold instead of a horse. He is choosing between one of some despised businesses here that some of us would do. I was telling one of my business forum leaders that we are going to change, that some of us who come every week for borrowing some few things, instead of us giving us what we normally give you, I will be walking with them in town and buy them a shoe. I ask you what is your, your business idea. I give you 5,000. One of my pastors attempted that. We buy you like kiwi, two brushes of different places, and I give you maybe lunch for that day. I pay counsel for one month and say, please proceed. We would want to be able to explore some places that we can do. And you can do that without papers. By the way, I'm not embarrassing one of our staff. One of our soldiers at the gate is actually doing that work to pay his KMTC school fees. He's been there and he has, he's, he has a diploma in KMTC. We need to roll our slaves and carry Jesus. Praise the Lord. I know some of us, we are learned, we are applying for jobs. I want to challenge you. To carry Jesus, we need to roll our sleeves. Amen. Take some calculated risks and learn to overcome this defeat. Your cord must be untied. That crazy idea that you have can be able to be of value. Who knew this code would carry Jesus? Who knew? Who knew this preacher would preach to you? Maybe you know that I'm preaching to you. Who knew? Praise the Lord. Live a balanced lifestyle. Do not be complicated. Implication, the code refers to visitors. It refers to non-locals. It refers to neglected people. It refers to unexpected people in business and around Eldoret. And let me tell us, if you don't wake up, you will wake up when we, who are visiting here. Actually, many of the hostels that are in this Eldoret are not owned by locals. I'm an Adanganya, Daktari. Sinukweli. Hey. The owners will ask, Nambona umifungua. They will ask. The Lord needs it. Hallelujah. If you have ears, the amen is going down, but the Lord is speaking. God is going to untie them for his business. He's going to untie his business for his glory. He's not going to use horses. Some of us are thinking, I'm, I'm just talking about that crazy idea. He's not going to use that. It is a privilege to allow your back to carry Jesus. It is a privilege to allow your academic credential to be used by Jesus. It is a privilege for God to use you who knows this elder. When I first came here, you know, I had not lived here. Pastor Patrick took some time to walk me around. Thank you for being used of the Lord. Amen. Now I know this city. Thank you. It's going to, you have some experience that you can teach people. Don't hold the information. I want to conclude and pray that God is raising an army. He's breaking every chain. He's unchaining many bonded, even with ideas that pastor, what he's speaking is, is taking us back. This is the message of the Lord. Eldoret will be a city because it is strategically placed, not actually for you. For those that are beyond, look at the connections and the all that you have. And he is going to give us the grace to thrive in every sphere. And there are many bondages, some are physical, some are spiritual, some are emotional, some are financial. But God is releasing us today. Worship team, please come here. Want to pray that God release us from every bondage. Bondage. 
Some of us, our emotions, our cultural inclination is so enclosed. The Lord is releasing and he's saying, Pastor, speak to them. Speak to them. I'm a sojourner. I'm just passing by because God has called me to preach. When my time will be up, that gives now, I'm closing. When it will be up in years, I will pack and go. But some of you will own the cities. When I come here, I want to sleep in your houses. Amen. Hallelujah. We want to pray for you that God will release you. Some of us are in bondages. We are thinking, oh, Elder Edinayenda, my friend, I'm telling you, this is the message of the Lord. May you be part of the people. Hallelujah. I feel energized to own the part of this place. We are expanding. We are seeing two Sitra Meldoret in this place. One in Kimumu, another one the other side. One in Soi. Hallelujah. We are releasing people. We are releasing missionaries in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We are not going to be limited because God wants to use the unused in the name of Jesus. And he does his grand march to where he wants to go and give us his redemptive plan in Jesus' name.